Andy and I'm a volunteer. My name's Lisa, I'm a volunteer. Hi, my name's Darren and I'm a volunteer chef. I'm Andrew Simpson and I'm a young volunteer. Hi, I'm Heather and I'm from the Volunteer. Hi, I'm Judy and I'm a volunteer. I'm Bob and I'm a volunteer for the food bank. Yeah, I'm Tammy and I'm a volunteer. Ah. My name's Rosie and I'm a volunteer. Hi, my name's Kelly and I'm a volunteer. Hello, I'm Eddie and I'm a kitchen volunteer doing the washing. My name's Will and I'm the Coordinating Manager for the House of Bread. Uh, House of Bread is basically a organisation, I use the word organisation because um, it's a group of volunteers basically who get together, we've been doing this for a couple of years now, who get together every Wednesday um, between the hours of 6 o'clock and 9 o'clock and we put on a meal for all homeless and vulnerable people in Stafford um, who might live in Stafford homeless or they might be what is referred to as sofa surfers that's no fixed abode but they move around from sofa to sofa and I started coming to House of Bread in around about um, April of 2011 it has been started by Matt Turner in October 2010 and my involvement was simply coming along as many many volunteers do uh, and I was just simply hooked and also at my lowest step the House of Bread was almost like a saviour Coming here like once a week really, really helps out. And we meet quite a lot of people in a similar situation, give advice, they give advice back to us, so it's really ideal. As soon as I got here, my own staff here, like, said hello to me, made me feel welcome. You come here and you get fed and that, and they help you out with toiletries, and they help you out with food and everything else. And so people gather, gather around and they hear and it grows larger and larger. So at the moment I think we've got about 160 odd volunteers, some of whom are committed once a week, twice a month, once a month. It doesn't really matter, your engagement is at the level you want. And I think that's why we work so well, because basically you can come and do as little as much as you want. And when you are here, you are making a difference. It's a really liberating time, you come down, you park your world, and you just spend those three hours talking to people about their world. And after that, you'd think you'd, you might find it slightly depressing if it's been a difficult evening, but actually it's the most uplifting experience you can imagine. So there's something about that that really works for people. A totally different atmosphere in the sense that we're all volunteers. And so um, that mentality means that everybody is here because they actually really want to be. So their heart is genuine to want to help. I am a parishioner at St John's Church on Western Road and I decided that the House of Bread was a worthy cause so I put a bin out in the foyer and asked the congregation to just purchase an extra item for, for the House of Bread when they do the shopping and then I bring it down on a Wednesday night and end up up to my armpits in washing up. People that come in, it makes everybody else feel a little bit better. Saw it on the newspaper, um, come down, offered my services because I'm a chef on uh, for a living and um, spoke to Will. He was keen to get a couple of more chefs involved in it. I've been coming for the past three years as a guest and now I'm a volunteer, paying back my time. My mum was a volunteer, so that got me into volunteering. I joined House of Bread a few months ago um, through knowing someone who actually came here as a visitor. I work up at Stafford Hospital as a healthcare worker, and I, this sort of thing interests me. I have quite a passion for the homeless people. So I just put the time in whenever I can to help. I've had a career for 13 years as a chef, and then moved into social care. Uh, I've worked within homelessness work beforehand as well. Uh, so I saw the advert, thought that's exactly what I've been looking for. Um, came along and it's just exploded. Um, I'm starting doing squares to knit blankets for the homeless. And we're doing 30 stitches along, 30 rows, 
and we're then making them into big blankets. We want people to donate wool so we can carry on knitting and there's a group of us that are um, in our houses knitting. I'm Jack and my dad is Will, uh, so I got into this through him because he uh, started doing it. I thought it sounded like a pretty good idea, so I came down and gave it a go and I'm still here. Many years ago, my partner um, died suddenly and if it wasn't for my mum actually giving me the money for the deposit for my first house, I'd be like the people we help, I would have been homeless. One of the reasons why I'm here. Um, the other reason is it's just a fantastic place to be. Clothes Bank started really as a result of House of Bread's need to add on different elements um, because people were coming to us either in clothes that were inappropriate for the season or just simply wet or just simply dirty. And so we started to get donations from people who would uh, ask us for a list of essential items. But basically we provide sort of starter packs for people. So it's underpants, socks, male and female. Toiletries is a big issue. So there's lots of, clean, of um, toothbrushes, flannels, towels, toothpaste. Um, so the clothing has expanded hugely and, and we love it. And uh, it's nice to be able to set it up the way we have so there's a mirror there so people can try things on so it becomes part of what I refer to our fashion retail area even though we're giving it away free but it's just nice it makes it real world it makes people care about what they're putting on see their faces light up when they pick a jacket out that's really big and warm and they can go away feeling better about themselves I think it's brilliant and it does offer dignity and respect back to them as well doesn't it so House of Red, translated from Hebrew, is that for the Prepared in, in advance, usually no more than 24 hours before we serve, uh, and then obviously kept refrigerated before it comes in and gets reheated. Uh, so yeah, a lot of, a lot of man hours at home. <laughs> Recently, as we've got larger numbers coming in, we found that we're getting more dietary requirements, uh, obviously due to the increase in people, so we're we'll trying to cover that to uh, make sure no one's excluded from the meal. Right, we're off to um, the food bank down at uh, Hale Owen, which is about 40 minutes away. Um, we've linked up with the Black Country Food Bank only this last week. Um, it's based down in Birmingham. They have around about five or six hundred bags a week. Uh, we're currently on about a hundred. They operate a slightly different system to us because they're covering such a larger area. Um, but it's interesting actually because when we went down there, one of the things we wanted to take away was just how effective they're being, given that we just started because we thought it was a good thing to do. So we had no real experience, but what was quite cool was that actually what we're doing in terms of the food selection, the way we refer it, and all the process is almost exactly a mirror of a, of a food bank that's been established for a number of years. So we were quite pleased really that um, we were doing all the right things. We're here. Let's <laughs> go meet Kelvin. Hello, how are you? Spare any of the shampoos, the soaps. Sort of In figures, we fed over 12,000 people last year. 12,000 people last year? Yeah. It's a Black Country food bank, so we work primarily in the Black Country. We uh, feed local people in crisis, that's the uh, part of the charity. So uh, it's been a rapid, rapid growth rate. 
Lydia's House is our clothing arm and so we provide free clothes to any client who needs them, bedding, um, duvet covers, duvets, sleeping bags, we have household goods, cups, saucers, pans. Our primary thing is to feed people, that is it. So that is the first and last thing we will always do. This, this to me was far more rewarding, this was instant gratification, yeah. this was working in, in well, the I think bank. I think your experience has been replicated across England. If you think about the contents of each bag, that's around about six tins, a packet of biscuits, sweets, cereals, if it's a family. Um, and to be in a society and to be living in a country which is probably one of the most wealthiest countries in the world, and I am giving out food bags, it's a real wake-up call to people. I yeah. said to some the other day when they were talking about what happens when the food runs out, I said the food's never run out. No. Um, and it doesn't. And it doesn't. No. <laughs> One day I'll come down here where it's warm. <laughs> Don't hold your breath. <laughs> okay, so we're at Drummond Road and we're going to meet Jack and Pete who are running the food bank for mm -hmm. us. <laughs> okay, well the food bank started in uh, October of last year. Um, the council were extremely generous. I, I phoned up the council and said, I need a warehouse. I want to stock some food for a food bank. And uh, so they, they found me some space. We have everything that you would get in a supermarket. Um, that includes baby food right the way through to cereals and uh, soups and, and everything in between. So we, yeah, we decided to do puns, so we've got Soup Doggy Dog, Miss Alanius, oh, I'm Vaginal D Hunter somewhere as well. And then my personal favourite, I think we turned it round because somebody from the council came round to have a look and it just had, it was a box of vegetables. <laughs> it said, Vajazzle. Veg. Veg. And then... Azzle in brackets. So that's a hundred bags of food every week leaves our food bank. Fifty of those will go to the House of Bread. And when we're down here, we put uh, a loaf in from the bakery that we get all the bread from, put them in the bag. Somebody says, I want a food bag to take home. We pick one up, give it to them, and away they go. Uh, with uh, hopefully enough food to last them a couple of days um, and with the right mixture in of stuff that they'll need. There's always pasta, soups, um, beans, a lot of beans. Uh, we try and get um, some sort of uh, vegetables and fruits in there as well, so they get, they hopefully get some sort of Balance. good and yeah. yeah, good and bad. Yeah. Uh, we say, oh, I can have one of the good food bags. We go, yeah, there you go, and then they're all exactly the same. <laughs> Here, well, met a lot of people here. My friend saved me. People close to me on Christmas Day. She came. She came. She came that week, and I just, I, just, I, just, I asked her out. <laughs> well, not straight away. I was a bit nervous at first. I was, I think, I was feeling an hour in, and then I said, I said to her, "Do you want to meet up the next day?" And we met up the next day. My name's Alex. I'm 29 years old, and I work at the hospital. I was a client first because I was homeless. I had nowhere to get. I had nowhere to go. That's why I ended up sleeping, sleeping off, sleeping in bins, sleep, sleeping, sleeping in chair shards. When I came here, I, I expected people to be staring at me, giving us grief, but they didn't. Everyone, just, 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 just me. Like I was not a normal person. I think about two months after I became a volunteer, I just wanted, I just wanted to love what I was given. I just wanted to give it back. But that, 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 that's something that doesn't end up shop. That's what, that's what I love doing, that's why I like going there. Put a smile on someone's face when you see him. It's a bit biggest achievement to have it. I like, as long as I'm working with the people, I like doing that. I like to be in the middle of it, like. There's a lot of guys love there, and there's a lot of people from different backgrounds. And no one gets judged when they come in here. Get a brew, have a cold drink, have something to eat, get themselves a pudding, feel all right, go home with something. Well, home, wherever home is. Sunday. Sunday was the return of a, a great friend of ours called Thomas, who's a Lithuanian citizen. 
He came to us homeless about four months ago, just before Christmas. Uh, he'd been smuggled into this country in a van with four other women. Uh, Thomas made his way to Stafford uh, and found us in the House of Bread. Spoke no English. Um, he befriended uh, a lot of folk at House of Bread. He was a very endearing guy. Thomas was absolutely hilarious. He was a bit of an artist. He would constantly do cartoons of people. Um, he was beginning to do Bible study with me. And so he would bring in his Lithuanian Bible and his English Bible. And we would sit in the cafe um, and just read passages and he would translate them. And then he would go upstairs. He would say, William, I am going to go upstairs and pray. And then he would go upstairs for half an hour. To become a UK citizen, well, to be able to live in, in the UK required a lot of documentation, more than just simply a passport. Um, but also he has family back home. And so what we decided to do was to facilitate his return home. So um, we bought a ticket for him to go back to Lithuania and then we took him to the airport. And uh, it, was, it was very tough to see him go. Um, and it was great in a way to see him off on that plane. Um, it was hard, but it's the best, best place for him to be. And it was great to be able to return him. Um, and House of Bread, I think, should claim credit for, for achieving that. Let's ask for travellers' checks. Um, I'm going to make a real life for himself uh, back in Lithuania. Father, uh, help us to um, keep in communication with him. Help us to keep that door open for him if he's to return. Father, we just trust everything to you. We thank you for Thomas. Thank you for the great blessing he's been to all of us. I think a postcard, a picture of Stafford uh, every week to your brother's address. Yeah. Thank you. See you next. Thank you. Yeah. And we see you. you. See you again. Yeah. Thank you. He, he just became part of Stafford's fabric for a relatively small amount of time. But somebody who was, in spite of the language barrier, he was somebody who was a really good friend. I, and I miss him. <laughs> Thomas, thank you. We're specifically looking at a building in Stafford, which I came across several months ago, which was empty. And I have a big thing about uh, empty property and it not being used. So the future for House of Bread is, for me, is that we move into 17 Eastgate Street and we are 24-7. And we offer that to anybody at any time of day um, who is passing through. And we get better at what we do. We increase the number of volunteers coming in. And we just, we just handle people as best we possibly can. And the advantage it would give us is that it takes the pressure off just being one evening. Um, and so therefore doing it two or three days a week would allow us to help people more effectively through the transition of the issues that they've got in their lives. We are allowed to go into the building and we can set up our food bank, which we've started. We can set up our clothing bank and we can, we can have office space where we can meet and greet people. What they don't want us to do is to cook meals and serve the meals. Now you'll have already seen that is the heart of what we do. Until we can do that, then really we wouldn't be offering what the House of Bread is and the success of the House of Bread. So that's really the nub of it. I think it's excellent. I mean, even if it's not just for a meal, it's somewhere people can come and talk to people and just something to do for them as well. We're on a bit of a snowball. It's getting bigger and bigger, so we just keep going on it. Things like House of Bread are a wake-up call in a good way. For us, it's about doing what we do the best way we possibly can. So we've got matching cutlery, we've got matching plates, because it needs to look good. It needs to be the best we can. And so our aspiration is to do that, to do the things that we do now better than we have ever done in the past. Because I do believe that that compassion and that spirit that people have at House of Bread fulfills their lives and fulfills the need in their lives that perhaps they haven't got. Job done. <laughs>
I've tried sometimes to create awkward situations. 